Miss Miklas here with our chapter 10 review video. And um, for this review, I've actually decided to just make up problems um, rather than go off the review worksheet. So if I were you, I would get out a piece of paper and kind of write this stuff down. The first section on our test is making us look at different patterns and determine is this sequence arithmetic, geometric, or other. If it's arithmetic, we need to say what the common difference is. If it's geometric, we need to say what the common ratio is. And if it's other, then we're just going to let it be. So if we're looking at this particular sequence, okay, we know that in order to determine if it's arithmetic or geometric, I need at least three consecutive terms. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see, does it look like it is arithmetic? We know with arithmetic, our common difference is any term minus the previous term. So it appears that our common difference would be 2. However, if I look, 1 plus 2 is definitely 3, but 3 plus 2 is not 6. So that tells me that this is not an arithmetic sequence because we do not have a common difference. Next, I'm going to look and see, is it geometric? I know geometric, our common ratio, is any term divided by the previous term. So if this was geometric, our ratio would be 3. 1 times 3 is 3. However, we run into another problem. 3 times 3 is not 6. So that tells me that this sequence is not geometric. So my only option left is that this is other. Okay, this is a sequence, but it is not arithmetic or geometric, so we would just simply leave it as other on um, our answer. Okay, number two, we're doing the same thing. First thing I'm going to check, does it look like we have a common difference? So I'm going to take any term minus the previous term, which is three. Three-fourths minus, this would be like twelve-fourths, would be negative nine over four. Now, I need to check, is 3 fourths minus 9 fourths 3 over 16? And no, that is not true, so that tells me that this sequence is not going to be arithmetic because there's not a common difference. Next, I'm going to check, is it geometric? Any term divided by the previous term would give me our common ratio, so let's see, 3 fourths Dividing by 3 is like multiplying by 1 third. So that gives me a ratio of 1 fourth. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 3 fourths times 1 fourth is 3 sixteenths. So that tells me that this is indeed geometric. So I'm going to write geometric. And R equals 1 fourth. Okay, so even though that this is a skill we need to know how to do it on every problem, there are some specific problems where this is the only thing we need to look at. The second part of the test, which is the majority of the test, is actually using the formulas. And we really talked about five different formulas, and you guys absolutely need to have these memorized. I promise if you don't have them memorized, you will not do well on this test. The other thing that becomes really important, other than just having them memorized, is knowing when to use which formula. And there's a few things we need to look for. The first thing I always need to check, is the problem arithmetic or geometric? Second thing I need to check, am I using my nth term formula or am I using my sum formula? And in fact, in arithmetic, if it's sum, we need to determine which of those two equations would be easier to use. Okay, so definitely make sure you have these five formulas memorized. So here is a typical question we would see on our test. Which term of the sequence, 6, 11, 16, 21, dot, 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 is 261? Now, upon looking at this problem, it does not tell me if it's arithmetic or geometric, so I need to determine that. Looking at these, okay, it appears like it's arithmetic, so let's check out our common difference. If I did 11 minus 6, I would get 5. 11 plus 5 is 16, 16 plus 5 is 21. So this really told me two things. It told me it's arithmetic and it, we figured out what D is. Second thing I need to figure out, 
Am I using my nth term formula or my sum formula? Our rule of thumb, if it says sum anywhere I'm using that here, it doesn't talk about the sum. So I know that I'm going to use our nth term formula instead. So let's see what we know. Okay, a sub n, they actually tell us what that term is. We don't know what n is because it asks us which term of the sequence. Okay, so I know that a sub n is actually 261. We know a sub 1 is 6. n is what we do not know. And I know the common difference is 5. So if I'm going through this, I get 255 equals 5 times n minus 1. And I'm going to divide both sides by 5 right away. And I get 51 equals n minus 1. So 52 equals n. Now, this would be a logical answer for n because it is a positive integer. If I really had time to double check my work, I could figure out what is a sub 52. So I could do 6 plus 52 minus 1 times 5, and I should get 261 as my answer. So this is a good example of a problem that is actually pretty simple to find the answer. The tough part was determining what are we actually finding and which formula are we supposed to be using. Okay, the second problem that I have written says the first three terms of a geometric sequence are 27, 18, and 12. Find a sub 11. Now this one's nice because it flat out tells us this is geometric. And I know I'm not using our sum formula because it does not talk about sum anywhere. So I'm using the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Now, we know that we're trying to find the 11th term. We know the first term is 27. We need to figure out what this ratio is, and then I'm doing to the 11 minus 1 power. So I know a ratio is any term divided by the previous term. Now if I look at 18 over 27, that reduces to be 2 over 3, and 18 times 2 thirds would indeed be 12, so that works. Okay, so I have 27 times 2 thirds to the 10th power. Now this is one of those problems that I wanted to go through because I think our calculator can sometimes be a little bit tough to deal with. In fact, if I put this into my calculator, I end up getting a sub 11 is like 0.468 and it continues. And obviously I know that is not my answer because it is not exact. Decimals are only okay when they terminate and it's an exact answer. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to have to try and use math frac on my calculator. And amazingly, when I use math frac, it reduces it and simplifies it to be 1,024 over 2,187. Now, I would definitely suggest trying this with your calculator. If your calculator did not convert it correctly, what you would really need to do is treat this as two separate problems. 27 times 2 to the 10th over 3 to the 10th. Okay, and I would simplify my numerator separately and my denominator separately. I can see that we're going to be able to simplify some stuff here because 27 is really 3 cubed. So in a certain sense, I could think of this as... 10, 2 to the 10th over 3 to the 7th power, because when I battle, the denominator would win by 7. And if I do 2 to the 10th power, I get 1,024. If I do 3 to the 7th power, I get 2,187. So definitely use your calculator as we go through these together to make sure that you understand what to do. Okay, number three tells us to find the geometric mean of 3 and 27. And just to remind us, we learned means are numbers that are in between. Okay, so it's like 3 blank and 27. So that tells me that 3 is our first term and 27 is my third term. 
In order to figure out this term in between, we need to figure out what our ratio is because if I know the ratio, I know I can multiply three by that value to get this number in between. Since it does not talk about sum at all, we're gonna go ahead and use the nth term formula. So for our nth term here, we're gonna use 27, and we know that mm -hmm. three is our first term. R is what we don't know, and 27 is our third term, so I'm using three to represent n. So in mm -hmm. order to solve this, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3, and I get 9 mm -hmm. equals r squared. So I'm going to square root both sides and do plus or minus. So I actually get plus or minus 3 equals r. Okay, what this tells me is that we have two possible ratios. It could be 3, it could be negative 3. So that means I need to find two different answers. If r is equal to 3, then 9 would be our geometric mean. Mm -hmm. If r is equal to negative 3, negative 9 would be our geometric mean. So those would be my two different answers. And in order to get full credit on this problem, I would need to have both of those solutions. Number 4 says, in the arithmetic sequence, a sub 5 equals 3, a sub 12 equals 52, find a sub 15. So it tells me it's arithmetic. The key thing we need to figure out here is what is our common difference. Because if I know my common difference, we can figure out how to get from the 12th term to the 15th term. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I'm going to think of 3 as my temporary a sub 1. Okay, and I know 12 minus 5 has to be equal to n minus 1. So 7 is n minus 1. So that tells me that this term is our eighth term. Okay, once again, 12 minus 5 is 7. 8 minus 1 is 7. So I'm going to say a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. 52 equals 3 plus 8 minus 1 times our common difference. So 52 was our eighth term, so that's where 52 and 8 come from. 3 is our first term, and we're trying to find out what d is here. So when I subtract 3, I get 49 equals 7d. So 7 is our common difference. Now, if I know that 52 is my 12th term, 13th term, 14th term, this is our 15th term. That's what we really need to find. Now, there's a few different ways we could logically do this. We could go ahead and use this original information and find a sub 1, then use the formula again and find a sub 15. What I personally think would be easier is just to build off of 52 and continue to add the common difference until I get to the 15th term. So that tells me that this would be 59. 59 plus 7 would be 66. 66 plus 7 would be 73. So 73 would be our 15th term. Okay, so the tough thing in this problem is this whole concept of fast forwarding the sequence so that we can actually determine what our common difference is. Okay, so number five, it tells us to find the sum, and as soon as I see the word sum, I know that we're going to use the sum formula, of the first 13 terms of the sequence 2, 8, 32. Now notice it does not tell me if it's arithmetic or geometric, so the first thing I need to do is determine what is this sequence, and it looks to me as though it is geometric and I'm multiplying by four each time. So I am going to go ahead and write, not a, I'm going to write s sub n equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power over 1 minus r. So I know the sum after 13 terms is going to be 2 times 1 minus 4 to the 13th power over 1 minus 4. Now this is something that we can put straight into our calculator and I get 4, 4, 
seven three nine two four two. Okay, so forty four million seven hundred thirty nine thousand two hundred and forty two. So that number is pretty large, but that would be a reasonable answer because I can see the third term is already thirty two. Each term is increasing quite rapidly. And then when I add them all together, it would be logical to have a very large number here. Number six is nice because it tells me right away we have an arithmetic sequence and it tells me my first term and my 15th term. And it tells me to find the sum after 130 terms. Now, um, a mistake I saw from a lot of you guys on our quiz on arithmetic sums is that you wanted to use this version of the formula with information like this. And the problem is, if I'm trying to find the sum after 130 terms, that means this has to be the 130th term. So I cannot use 15 as my a sub n here. So since I do not know what the 130th term is, I know I'm going to have to use my original sum formula. Now, what you guys may be noticing is I actually do not know what our common difference is. Because if I start plugging stuff in, I have the sum after 130 terms is 130 over 2 times 2 times 68 plus 130 minus 1 times our common difference, which we do not currently know. So I'm going to have to use my nth term formula to actually figure out what our common difference is. I know the 15th term is 40, okay, so I have 15 minus 1 times d. When I subtract, I get negative 28 equals 14d, so negative 2 is our common difference. So this information, a sub 15 equals 40, they just gave to us so that we could figure out what the common difference is. Now that I know that, I can go ahead and substitute this into my calculator. When I put this all into my calculator, I get the sum after 130 terms is negative 7,930. And it would make sense that our answer would be something like this because I can definitely see our common difference is negative. So if I'm going all the way to the 130th term, I'm going to start getting into some negative values. Okay, so it would make sense that our sum would also be negative. Number 7 gives us the first term and the third term, and then it tells us to find the sum after 10 terms. Now, the problem here, there is no way for me to know if this is arithmetic or geometric. So we need to treat it both ways and give both answers. And I would definitely expect a problem like this on our test. So if it's arithmetic, I know the sum after n terms is n over 2 times 2 a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to say s sub 10 equals 10 over 2 times 2 times 50 plus 10 minus 1 and all of a sudden, I'm realizing I do not have that common difference. So this is actually really similar to the problem we just did, where I'm going to use the fact that 2 is our third term to help me determine what my common difference is. So I get negative 48 equals 2d. So negative 24 is our common difference. So I'm going to plug that in there. And now when I put this all into my calculator, I get the sum after 10 terms would be negative 580. Okay, so that is the first part of this problem. Now we need to go ahead and also treat it like it is geometric. So now if I'm treating it like it's geometric, um, I notice the one thing we do not know is we definitely do not know what our ratio is. So I'm going to have to figure that out. So I'm going to say 2 equals 50 times r to the 3 minus 1. When I divide, I get 1 over 25 equals r squared. And when I square root both sides, I know I'm going to get plus or minus 1 fifth is our ratio. So 
This actually causes us some more work because now I need to determine what is the sum if our ratio is positive one-fifth and then what is the sum if our ratio is negative one-fifth. So let's do S sub 10 equals 50 times 1 minus, let's do one-fifth first over 1 minus one-fifth. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all into my calculator. And the sad news is that when I put this into my calculator, it doesn't really work out so well. So that means I get to do it by hand. Yay. So I know that this is going to be 50 times 1. Okay, I just rewrote 1 minus, I did 1 to the 10th power is 1. 5 to the 10th power is this denominator right here. So I rewrote this so we had a common denominator. So what I really have here is 50 times 9765624 over 9765625 times 5 over 4. Because I know that when I'm dividing by 4 fifths, it is like multiplying by 5 over 4. And my hope here is that stuff reduces. And I know that this 5 and this number are going to reduce to be 1, 9, 5, 3, 1, 2, 5. Okay, and I know um, 25 is definitely going to go into that. And 25 also goes into 50, so that would become 2. And this number would become 7, 8, 1, 2, 5. I know that 2 and 4 go into each other, so that becomes a 2. And I know that 9, 7, 6, 5, 6, 2, 4 is divisible by 2. And when I divide that by 2, I get 4, 8, 8, 2, 8, 1, 2. So our sum here is 4, 8, 8, 2, 8, 1, 2 over 7, 8, 1, 2, 5. Now, I know that looks super ugly, but um, that is our first solution here. Yes, our first, well, technically our second, because we found arithmetic. This is our first geometric solution. Now, I need to go ahead and change this, okay, to be a negative one-fifth and a negative one-fifth here. Okay, so now we're treating it as if our ratio is negative one-fifth. And technically, that's not going to change the numerator here at all because I know when I take a negative um, number to an even exponent, it's going to become positive. But it definitely changes my denominator. Instead of being four-fifths, it's going to be six over five. Okay, so I just did the one minus this fraction again, just like we had previously, okay? And it's times 50 divided by 6 over 5. And now we're going to have to use our brains once again to kind of reduce some stuff. Okay, and I know 5 goes into this value here, 1,953 and 125 times. Once again, I know that 25 goes into that, 7, 8, 1, 2, 5. Okay, some other things. I know 2 goes into 6 three times, and I'm going to have to look and see if this number is divisible by 3. And the good news is, it is divisible by 3. Yay, even more huge numbers here. So this goes in 3, 2, 5, 5, 2, 0, 8. So I get the sum is 3, 2, 5, 5, 2, 0, 8 over 7, 8, 1, 2, 5. So we did a lot of work on this problem, okay, but we did end up with all three answers. Hopefully this was also a good example of what we need to do to reduce fractions if math frac is not cooperating. Okay, that problem was a little exhausting, and now we're on to 8, which is another tough problem, but I wanted to show us some of these, because I would definitely expect some stuff like this on our test. So here we have our first term, it talks about a sum, and it talks about a ratio. So in my mind, I know it's geometric because of R, 
I know I'm using the sum formula because it says s. So let's go ahead and substitute stuff in. So I'm going to say this sum after three terms, and I don't even need to write that. I don't have to write that because I know it is just 95 over 2 is 10 times 1 minus r cubed over 1 minus r. Now, this is when our brilliant honors algebra 2 minds come into play. This looks really tough to go ahead and simplify, but I notice that this is actually our difference of cubes pattern. So I'm going to go a, b, a squared, a times b, b squared, and it goes so same, opposite, always positive. So the nice thing that happens here is these 1 minus r's cancel each other out, and I'm left with 95 over 2 equals 10 times 1 plus r plus r squared. Now, I notice that I have a quadratic equation here, so I'm thinking that we are going to have to go ahead and factor this in some way. So there's a few ways we could go about doing this. I'm actually going to get rid of that 2 right away. So I would get 95 equals 20 times 1 plus r plus r squared. And then I'm going to distribute 20. So I get 20 plus 20r plus 20r squared. Or I could think of this as 20r squared plus 20r minus... 75 is equal to 0. So if I'm factoring this, the first thing I'm looking for is a GCF, and I notice that I can take a 5 out, and I'd be left with 4r squared plus 4r minus 15. So now we need to factor this, and I'm going to try 2r and 2r and see if that works and I need to do um, factors of negative 15. So I'm thinking probably five and three here. So let's try plus five and minus three. And if I check my inside and outside, two r minus three is negative six, five plus two is 10, 10 minus six is four. So I factored this correctly, and I'm going to set all my factors equal to zero, and I went ahead and wrote 5 equals 0 just to remind us if there's not an r, I can just kind of throw that away. So here I get 2r equals negative 5. So r is negative 5 halves. 2r equals 3, so r equals 3 halves. Okay, so both of these answers are correct, and I would need to give both of them. Okay, because based on our problem, we do not have enough information to determine which of these would be accurate. So they're both correct. We know R can be anything. N is the one that's really specific that it could only be a positive integer. So hopefully this review has um, adequately shown you guys how to kind of process through the problems. Um, you guys have the review problems to go through with the correct answers. Um, you guys also, I would suggest going back and doing some of the problems on the worksheets this chapter. And make sure you guys have those formulas memorized, okay? If you need any help, please come in and see me and study and do your best.